Yo, what's up? My name is Petrowski, and today I actually wanted to talk about what is, in my opinion, the best core in NU right now in Pokemon. So what I mean by that is this is the best like group of Pokemon. If you wanted to build a really, really powerful team, you would essentially take these four Pokemon and then insert two other Pokemon you either love or care about or you know want to play with or whatever it may be onto this team and alongside these Pokemon. So these Pokemon are Golbat, Steelix, Blaziken, and Ambipom. So Let's go ahead and get into it. This is also fantastic for a balance core. We have two defensive Pokemon and then two offensive Pokemon. That's what makes this core, in my opinion, so powerful. But there are so many synergies and interesting capabilities. Um, a couple things to note. You probably want... there's like Mine, mine aren't perfect examples. Um, you probably don't want Adamant Nature on your Steelix. You probably don't want... You definitely don't want Jolly Nature on your Golbat. Although it has saved me a couple times, uh, funnily enough. Um, the Amapom is pretty perfect, uh, pretty much. Yeah, the Amapom is pretty good. Although, don't go double slap. You probably go uh, return, or there's some other move that I'm forgetting. Uh, also, my Blaziken's a little funny. Don't use my Pokemon as perfect examples, but I do want to talk about the Pokemon as themselves. So, uh, I guess we'll just go by one by one. First things first. Uh, let's do offense first. First things first, let's talk about Amapom. So, right now, and I, I've talked about this Pokemon to death. Amapom, fake out. Technician, Stab, Silk Scarf, Ambipom. Its fake out does about 50% damage to every single Pokemon in the meta that isn't Steelix or like Gollum. And even Gollum, it can chip down and beat in the 1v1. It is insane. I have talked about Ambipom to a disgusting degree. The Pokemon is so fast at 115 base speed. Um, the bulk obviously isn't very impressive, but it's more than enough, especially when you're essentially getting a free turn. Uh, off the fake out the amount of times and you don't have to run scarf or choice band or anything to make up for it you really you just get to go silk scarf um some people run life orb which i think is actually worse losing that chip damage on amapom is really really relevant in some games especially if they make a switch to a rocky helmet steel and you take too much damage uh it's gonna whittle your amapom down too fast the amount of games i have won by being able to bring in my amapom with a sliver of health left and get off that one extra fake out is so important every piece of health on amapom is actually so important because getting off one more fake out one more fake out could mean half of a pokemon's hp it can be so so important um and because this pokemon is so good that's why i like golbat and steelix because these pokemon essentially are the two biggest counters to amapom uh, i think golbat actually counters it way better than uh, golem in my opinion because it's able to tank it uh, it doesn't get flinched. Even if you switch it in, you can still roost up next turn and survive. It's fantastic. Um, but anyway, Amapom is a fantastic lead Pokemon, as is Blaziken. Both of the offensive threats are fantastic lead options. You can pretty much go either or, depending on, you know, what the matchup is uh, and what you need to go. It's it's really beautiful. So, U-turn, fake out. Uh, this should be like tail slap or whatever the other move is, or return, uh, and beat up. I really like beat up. Not every Ambipom player is running beat up. A lot of them are running low kick. And in my opinion, low kick is pretty bad. Um, people run low kick to basically counter Golem slash Steelix, which are its two, like counters or whatever but i don't think it's good enough and i don't think it's worth like it's not worth in my opinion trying to cover that weakness on amapom i'd rather have amapom just hard lose to like steelix i think it already i think it can beat golem without um low kick which is hysterical um but i don't you don't need to cover that weakness like i don't think you need to cover that weakness i think you need to play into its strengths uh, and beat up allows it to one shot Rotom lead, which is way more prevalent in my opinion and way more important. Um, and a lot of people won't expect it, and they'll just like keep their their Rotom in and get obliterated because um, they think they're like immune to the fake out, which they are. But you're faster and can throw up a beat out, beat up, or a U turn, which is fantastic. So Amapom is just so strong. It's such a safe offensive threat. Fake out is just so safe. Um, it's 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 pretty low skill to use. Surprisingly, it's just really really powerful. Now. Blaziken is a much more difficult to use Pokemon, much more difficult to pilot um, because of high jump kick and because of uh, being scarfed. Scarf slash choice band slash uh, choice, you know, specs Pokemon can be really difficult to pilot. Uh, you know, by pilot, I mean like use. It's kind of like a card game term, I guess. But um, to pilot because it's really, you have to either, you have to understand how your opponent plays. Um, if you're on Blaziken, 
And this wouldn't happen anymore because Venusaur is UU. But if you're on Blaziken and you're staring down a Venusaur, you have to understand how is my opponent going to play this? Is he going to make the obvious play and switch out into, you know, a Golbat to like tank the Flare Blitz or something or a Steelix to, or, uh, you know, Golem to tank the, the Flare Blitz? Or will he be crazy and stay in? Like how, how risky is my opponent play? And getting that understanding within one singular match is really difficult. Um, so Scarf users and Specs users and Choice Band users are really difficult because of that. It's not always the best play in Pokemon to just make the obvious play, which is surprising. Or it's really nice to begin to predict your opponent, but then you reach a level where you start to predict your opponent and they either make a counter prediction play, which, which can look crazy, uh, either, out of, either out of skill or out of ignorance. That's the whole Pokemon coin flip iceberg thing. Um, but... Blaziken's so powerful. Being able to lead with choice Scarf Blaziken. Scarf is so important for this thing. I believe it's at a 70% usage rate for Scarf right now, and then a 15% for Life Orb. I really like the Scarf variant. Uh, if you're going the Life Orb variant, I would absolutely not lead with that Pokemon. Um, it's not a great lead then. It's just too slow, um, surprisingly, even though it's 80 speed tier, which, but yeah. You, NU's pretty fast right now, I want to say. Um, it's just very, very aggressive. NU is very, very aggressive. I don't think stall really exists right now in NU. I would love to try to make a stall team because I love stall. But um, yeah, we're getting too rambly. Uh, being able to U-turn out with Blaziken is so huge for free. But your U-turn is an incredible move. Uh, singles has revolved around U-turn and Vault Switch and everything like that since its existence. Um, being able to U-turn out, super, super important. Um, high jump kick packs insane damage at a little bit of a scary risk, but it's only 10%. Uh, I go Brave Bird. A lot of people will go like Flamethrower over this slot for consistency, but I don't care about that. My Blaziken is a suicide, punch a hole, do a ton of damage kind of Pokemon. Um, it's nice to keep it around. Like, U Turn is my consistent move. I don't need like Flamethrower and make it mixed, or like, I don't need like a. I don't need a safe uh, fire type move, in my opinion. I like having the Brave Bird coverage. Um, well, it doesn't really cover a whole lot except for opposing Blazikins or something like that, but it's, it's been clutch in certain moments. I really like it personally um yeah blaziken's just good blaziken's been so good for so long if you guys don't know we can actually look at the statistics on these pokemon so we're gonna end you uh blaziken is currently at a 33 almost 34 percent usage rate and a 52 percent win rate really really strong stuff ambipom is currently at a 17 percent usage rate which is higher than last season uh and then a 51 percent win rate really really powerful pokemon once again now moving on to defensive pokemon i'm surprised these pokemon have actually been getting much more use than i expect um, Steelix. Steelix is sitting at a 17 usage rate with a 50, almost 55% win rate. That is so powerful. That is so good. Um, which is crazy. I think Steelix is actually, Steelix has not traditionally been a super powerful Pokemon in Pokemon. So I'm actually really happy to see it be in a really good spot right now. The one thing I would change on this Steelix is I think Earthquake over Gyro Ball is much more consistent. So the general play style and thought process with Steelix is to bring it in against something you can obviously come in pretty safely against, tank a hit, set up Stealth Rocks, set up Toxic depending on what you're facing down if you can, and then Dragon Tail everything around. I love Dragon Tail. Not everyone, run, not everyone runs Dragon Tail on their Steelix. Some people will go more... Um, like attack heavy, they, they might go gyro ball and earthquake over this slot instead, or they could go like leftovers with like protect, uh, like toxic protect leftovers. But I don't, I don't love the leftover set. I think Rocky Helmet is fantastic on Steelix. It's really hard to take down. It's so bulky. For those who don't know, Steelix is a monster defense wall. Now it is, it can be quite weak, especially defensively. So it is important to keep that in mind. But it can still tank a hit or two, and then worst case scenario. Steelix's worst case scenario is taking a hit, getting a hit to 1 HP and surviving because of Sturdy and still setting up Stealth Rocks. As long as Steelix can set up Stealth Rocks, you're always going to get some sort of value with Steelix, and that's why it's so consistently good. That's why you see it with a 55% win rate. So, yeah, Steelix has a base 75 HP, 200 insane defense stat, and 65 special defense. Those are the main stats that matter. Um, the 85 attack is also pretty relevant, but... Not super crazy. I definitely would replace Gyro Ball with Earthquake, in my opinion. I think Gyro Ball is just... Earthquake is so much more consistent and steal its per... per uh, resides itself and is proud. It's proud of itself for being a consistent Pokemon. So I think adding... Just playing into, playing into a Pokemon's strengths is 
much more important most of the time than trying to have that Pokemon cover its own weaknesses. Usually when building a Pokemon team, you want other Pokemon to cover your own Pokemon, your other Pokemon's weaknesses instead of them trying to cover every weakness. Um, you want to play into their strengths. So let's talk about Golbat. Uh, and I'll talk about Golbat and Steelix's relationships because they both... They can switch in like back and forth to each other surprisingly well. They're not, they're no, they're not the like Skarm Blissey of NU, but they're pretty good. Um, for example, if someone was trying to Psychic or Rock Slide your Golbat, you can switch into Steelix. He resists both of those attacks really, really fantastically. If someone is trying to um, Flamethrower or Earthquake your Steelix, you can go into Golbat. He can probably should be able to take any Flamethrower pretty well. He can roost it back up. He tanks it well enough. Um, obviously he dodges EQ with his flying type, which is really important. Um, or like earth power, of course, which is what, which like earth power would shatter. A Nido Queen's earth power would shatter a Steelix, but being able to go into Golbat and, uh, be able to pressure it down with Defog and just roosting up and stalling it out. Also Defogging to be able to get rid of, um, to be able to get rid of a Nido Queen's like stealth rocks or something. Super, super important. Um, Golbat's just a fantastic Pokemon. In my opinion, most people run Rotom. As, as a defogger over Golbat, but in my opinion, I think Golbat's probably the, the best defogger. Rotom, Rotom kind of gets defog, and it's like a side, it's like a awesome thing, but like, it's, uh, but like, Rotom does more damage, and is like more of an offensive Pokemon with like Shadow Ball and like Vault Switch, whereas Golbat is the best pure defogger probably in the tier. Um, it's just really powerful. Uh, having access to Brave Bird's really nice. Brave Bird's the move that I click the least on this Pokemon, for sure. Um, the moves that I clicked the mo the move that I clicked the most on my Golbat is probably Roost. It is actually insane, just how powerful it is being able to switch into Golbat. Um, Eevee like Golbat's just so tanky. Being able to switch into Golbat, Roost up whatever damage you take, and then just like switch back out or like switch into like a uh, using Golbat as a pivot is so so powerful. Um, and these these two defensive th this defensive core alone shares such a powerful synergy i think if anything from this video the golbat plus steelix synergy is probably the best these two are also just very powerful threats being able to u-turn back and forth to each other is really really good as well as being able to or like being able to u-turn into like a steelix or u-turn into a golbat is really powerful um alongside fake out i really really love fake out plus u-turn or fake out plus fault switch or what, what, I was talking about, what I was talking about with my Pikachu video where I did a Pikachu showcase, Fake Out plus Vault Switch plus Extreme Speed. That set on a Pikachu felt so powerful. Having all of that priority, all of that aggression, all of that tempo is just so overwhelming. And you really have to have the perfect counters to be able to get rid of it. Um, now, Pikachu is a really frail, frail Pokemon, so it is very uh, glass cannon, high risk reward, whereas these Pokemon are pretty frail, but uh, way less frail than Pikachu. Um, and I just, yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to talk about. Um, the def defensive core here, offensive core here, you can, you know, mix and match, do whatever you want to do. You want, we want to make a hyper offensive team, ditch these Pokemon and just go with this. You want to make a hyper... Uh, stall team which doesn't really exist in any right now you can you know put these grab these two guys i would love to see people experiment with audino i think Re regenerator audino has a really interesting place in the meta that's being super underutilized but that's for another video thank you guys so much for watching i really really appreciate it hopefully you guys enjoyed to a decent degree hopefully staring at those four pokemon wasn't too boring for the entire video i really do appreciate it please make sure to like if you enjoyed subscribe for future pokemon content check out all the playlist links down below for more pokemon content after this video is over consider joining the discord if you want to join a really cool community, ask PvP questions, learn about the game, maybe battle some other community members and just practice and learn. And then finally, if you want to go above and beyond and become a YouTube member to me for five bucks a month, you could consider doing that or hitting up my Twitch Prime, Twitch Sub, uh, Patreon, or Venmo. All of that stuff is linked in details below. I just appreciate you guys' time. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed today's video and just had a positive time and learned something from it. Have a great day. I'll see you guys on the NU ladder.